termites. My God, it's ep- episode 76. How exciting is that? 76, the year my younger sister was born as what? A bicentennial baby. So many things. So many things, termites. Um, let's start with, where have I been? I was in Florida with Lewis Black, and we did a little golf. And a termite in Florida, Allison and her husband, Paul, super fun termites, and uh, invited us, me and Lou, to golf at um, a very, very nice place called Atlantic Beach Country Club. And it wasn't snotty or nothing. No, a lot of the country clubs are super intimidating and snotty. Uh, This one was super, everyone was very friendly. And when I got to um, me and the cart, Look what look what the termite had given me. A Bucky's cooler. I saw a cooler and I got excited. I'm like, oh, maybe they got some local beers. Which she did that too. Which she did. she drove way far down to this giant Bucky's. And inside the Bucky's, did you know the Bucky's people? They make their own animal crackers. I love these as a kid. Oh, well, I still do. Nice. Yeah. They have their their beaver buddies. <laughs> <laughs> and then I gotta say, I had never tried it. I ate Lou's bag. He didn't eat his. He did not eat his, so I stole his. Five stars on the Bucky's Trail Mix. It's really good. It's got M and M's. You know what? He knows we don't just want healthy shit. No. No. And then um, the Beaver Nugget Milk Chocolate. I'm saving for my mom. Looks delicious, but I'm down two teeth right now. I'm I'm getting a new order with it, so I don't want to eat the nut thing. But it was just a wonderful surprise and a wonderful day of golf. Super windy. Lewis shot. Oh, 101. Yeah, I just said that out loud. I hope he isn't listening. I shot 80. Nice. What? Yes. And, you know, sometimes you think, well, I don't know. Do we, is this rude? Should we not take this offer? But why not, right? We had a blast. Otherwise, we couldn't get to play there. And then we played um, over at, um, God, no, I can't remember that. TPC Sawgrass, right. The 17th hole, the famous one. I've never played it. Lewis and I tried to do one year a bucket list course. Yep. Um, and the years have gotten so screwed up in the last two or three years. But, yes, I pardoned, I pardoned 17, and I did it from the white tees because my brother said Patrick played there during college, and he said, don't go to the women's tees. It's even a harder shot. Uh, and, it, and he was right. It's the angle's bad. Yeah. So I did it from the men's tees. Nice. Yeah. But Lewis also got it on, I will, and I believe part it, too. Wow. Yeah, he was really playing good golf. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Lou can, well, we, what we deem as monkey golf, meaning like his limbs aren't attached to his body, and he's just <laughs> like a holler monkey in the woods. You just see him in the woods going, rah, God damn it, God damn it. One, one time he lost his shit so much in Ireland, this old Irish caddy that truly did look like a leprechaun, like he hopped out of the caddy shack and he was just this little little Santa Claus leprechaun thing. And Lewis was in this deep grass and he just kept hacking at it, hacking at it. And finally, the, the and he was like, that guy was like 76 at the time. Lewis was probably 70. And he walked over and grabbed his club, took Lewis's club out of his hand and said, they don't understand the name Lewis, the Irish don't. It, they just Doesn't change it to Louis, right? They just translate Louis. it into Louis. And he goes, Louis, remain here and collect yourself. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I go, did that guy just put that guy, did that 76-year-old just put that 70-year-old in timeout? And Louis stood there like a deal, <laughs> like he should have, because that caddy ain't giving that club yeah. back. And I'm like, Louis, you can't just, just throw it out for Christ's sake. You're not going to get it out of this shit. We're not being paid. Right. No one cares. We're not, n- nobody's filming this. Just... I will even let you have it. Well, you can have a stroke. I don't care. It's not like we're that serious, but it was a nice little getaway. Um, warm. It's warm. It was so shockingly warm in Jacksonville, yeah. but that's why I picked it. Right. I'm like, look. Where'd you stay? Um, uh, we stayed at the Marriott there. You like Marriott? I love Marriott properties. <laughs> I love all Marriott properties. I'm an ambassador. No, I didn't even know that level existed. It's just by how much you stay. It's uh, not by how much you pay or true. you can't buy it. You can't buy it. So, but I didn't know that was happening. And my friend, um, Dory, who's a very, um, high powered executive. How do you like that language? Wow. A high level, <laughs> high powered executive. Um, and knows many, many things about Marriott. Didn't even know I was an ambassador. And I arrived at some hotel in Omar Ray, a Marriott property. Because I like Marriott Courtyards. I like all Marriott's. 
and they were like, oh, we've never met an ambassador. And I was looking around going, me neither. <laughs> Thinking like somebody super fancy from, it. oh, it's the ambassador from Romania. Right. Um, they're like, no, ma'am, you've reached that status. I go, what does it include? Sometimes secret gifts. Really? Yeah, like Monterey, there was a little tiny pair of binoculars. No. Yeah. I don't know if I'm supposed to be saying those things, yeah. but... Uh, it's something to strive for, and I have so many Marriott points, I figure when I retire, I can just drive around everywhere and stay for free. That's my goal. Is that where the golf balls came from? Was the Marriott in Jacksonville? The, the golf balls, yes, from the Marriott in Jacksonville. The TPC ones? The TPC ones, yes. And then um, the, the Atlantic Woo! Beach Country Club has super cool turtle logo that I really liked, and I, I bought a hat. So there you go. So that's what's been going on. Um, um, a, lot of, a lot of fighting about comedians um what am i yeah on i'm not gonna mention names a lot of <laughs> so glad it's not me every time i see shit about comedians whether it's on twitter or the news and so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that and aren't we supposed to be dangerous and rebels i'm like no we started at a place called go bananas <laughs> fuck right. off we're supposed to be funny that's the or at least mildly entertaining like right. this podcast isn't funny funny like my act is should be funny funny people are paying a lot of money to see that but this is and i worked on it for 30 years this is just fun nonsense right. this is what i would talk about at the bar if i went to my lake bar and hadn't seen anybody in a With week your notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well it's what you do all week right. but god the fighting on twitter the intensity of some people on spotify some people not i i'm a middle child right. i stand back and watch fights i don't I mean, if somebody starts one, I'll fight back. Mm -hmm. But I'm so glad. All I think, that's all I think of. Is the, I'm so glad this isn't me. I'm so glad this isn't me. Oh, my God. Uh, so I'm not going to comment on any of that. I just put on Twitter that um, people are getting their diet. I think it's time to dial down the grandiosity of what we were supposed to be doing as stand-up right. comedians, okay? <laughs> I started at a place called Funny Bone. It didn't say danger bone. It didn't say intellectual bone. It didn't say deep thought bone. Nope. nope. Intrigue bone. Nope. Funny. But I, I put something like that on Twitter, John Heffron, who's from Michigan. And I always, I've always i always said Heffron, but I know it's uh, – he says it differently. Heffron. But Heffron. Heffron. Right. I say Heffron. Yeah. Anyway, he's been my friend for 100,000 years. And Ro John wrote back, I think only the Midwest comics – feel this way <laughs> that, that like it's a job we, we're getting paid to make people laugh right. this is i take that seriously like i'm not going to go up there and just be self-indulgent and talk about my fantasy football team i will do that on here right. because i'm not getting paid by anybody you have a free choice you have free will you can leave you can turn it off you can stay and hang out and talk about my new tom brady candle what? <laughs> that's cool this Sick. is my friend dory um dory sent me betty white and so on. Oh, great. And I mean. Are you excited you're tired? I'm excited, so I'm retired for Tommy. Do you want to take a moment? But I would like to take a moment to say he's the greatest of all time. He's the <laughs> GOAT. Um, long live the GOAT. That's what this says. And Betty White says, St. Betty White. Oh, she's got jewels on and stuff, too. Oh, this is bedazzled, the Betty White one, as wow. it should be. Tom's yeah. does not have any jewels on it or anything. Yeah, I think Tom should should go. It's time. There's a new kind of quarterback, and I think we all saw it with Josh Allen and and Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. Tom doesn't have the runaround ability. I'd still swear by his arm. Mm -hmm. I love you, Tom. I love you. <laughs> um, and he seems like a very nice person, yeah. nice human. Yeah, he gives nice good. interviews. Mm -hmm. He's not a dick. Nope. Um, you know, good for him. And what's what's so bad about retirement? You get to go spend time with your super hot model wife and your perfect kids. Have yeah, fun. Right. Go before you're brain damaged. Mm -hmm. That's how I. That's what I would put in a locker room in the NFL. Leave before you're brain damaged. <laughs> Although you get somebody like Gronkowski, and I I don't think it matters. <laughs> like we, if you start out super like what, just keep playing. It's fine. There's See? nothing. Tommy though. Although he does have a brand of clothing, and I don't think it's going to catch on. Yeah. It's called Brady Wear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's boring. Yeah. But he's, you know. Perfect. Tom doesn't have the Joe Burrow flair. He, he does, the young people are bringing a little bit more to the table. Mm -hmm. We're not going to light these right now because we have to wait till a couple other people burn out. Oh. 
Well, okay. yeah, because I don't want to set this house on fire. And sometimes I blow them out and they fucking come back on. I got to get a new post one. Your post Malone? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that one going out? Yeah. Pretty sad about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Torres, what am I drinking? Well, this is a Valentine's, or as somebody I know says, <laughs> Valentine's with an M. It's a Valentine's Super Bowl two-fold episode. So, wow. yeah, this is Rheingeist. A lot of people don't understand how much of a German town Cincinnati is. It's a fun town. Mm -hmm. I like to go up to the mountain, downtown Mount Adams, and drink my ass off. There's an Irish bar up there. I can't think of the name of it, but I know it when I see it. I'm like... I'm like, no, I'm like a dementia patient. I don't know the name, but God damn it, I'll know it when I see it. Um, and I do. It's 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 super duper old. Crowley's. Crowley's. Is that the one though? Yep. You sure? Mm -hmm. All right. I only know when I get there. But I have always had a great time in Cincinnati. And then boom, right over the river. Boom, you're in Kentucky. And what was that the home of? The Kentucky Funny Bone. What? Oh. Me and Ron White. And even Foxworthy had many a drunken nights in Covington. And thinking about how we were walking around <laughs> drunk, maybe not the best idea. But the homes on that side, oh, the old, old, old homes down by the river are so awesome. It's worth it. It's worth the walk across the bridge. You just walk across the bridge, you boom, you leave Ohio, boom, you are in Kentucky, just like Missouri and Illinois, except it's a much longer walk. And on that side of the bridge, um, um yeah, you do feel like you're in Kentucky. Yeah. There's an old southern, it's the architecture and stuff. It reminds me of the old south in Covington. The homes are spectacular. Um, uh, this is called Rheingeist, since he made. It's called Snow Cat, White Winter Ale with ginger and grapefruit peel. I love any little bit of grapefruit. I don't like any fruit in any of my alcohol except for a little bit of grapefruit and a beer. Delicious. So are you drinking that in honor of I'm drinking it in honor of Cincinnati <laughs> because I hope... Not only do they win, I want Stan Kroenke. Now, some of you may not know the history of Enos Stanley Kroenke. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you just a little bit because I don't think I've explained it enough. Maybe I have, and I'm just too angry. It's possible. Enos Stanley Kroenke is a man who was born in Missouri. Born in Missouri, and his parents were such big St. Louis baseball Cardinal fans, they named him after two famous St. Louis Cardinals. Who? Enos Slaughter. Look him up. He's from, like, the 1911s. And then um, Stan Musial. Okay, so that's how much your parents loved St. Louis and Missouri. And the minute that goddamn asshole gets a dime, he buys the Rams and moves them out of Missouri. Now, had somebody from L.A. come and said, we want our Anaheim Rams back? That's a different story. Okay. He's a traitor. Mm -hmm. And what's great, what's great is when I say on anything on Twitter how much I hate Nina Stanley Kroenke, it's global because he owns teams in England and they hate him too. It's a global hatred of the man. Oh. Silent Stan. <sighs> I hope the Rams, not only do they lose, although I do like Cooper Cup. I like certain players on the Rams. I don't, don't like that coach with his QP do, doll hair do. <laughs> I think he thinks he's a player or some shit. I love Joe Burrow. Um, I like a lot of the people. I like Mixon. It's you and Kay Adams. But main... Jamar Kay, Chase is wonderful. Who? Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is fantastic. Yeah. I just, I can't, there's just no way on this earth I can ever root for anything Stan Kroenke owns. Ever. I can't. I wish him nothing but bad things. Like, I can't even describe... <laughs> I can't even put into words my level of disdain for this man. And the fact that he gets the Super Bowl in his own stadium already is nauseating enough. Right. But that's enough. I'll move on. That could go on for days. And pe people didn't tune in for that. Adams. Kay Adams on Good Morning Football. Yeah. Um, just a side note there, too. She went to Mizzou. She's from Chicago. Super smart. About sports and everything, I would assume. But sports is what she does on Good Morning Football and the NFL Network. Uh, Chris Carter used to play for the Minnesota Vikings. Everybody remember Chris Carter? Mm -hmm. He was talking about golfing at a, um, a private country club in Florida that doesn't allow women. Adios. Adios is the name, but hold on. So Kay Adams on the show goes, wait, seriously? Like, there's no women? Like, it's such an outdated concept. Right. She thought he was joking. Right. And he goes, yeah, no, they don't. He clearly saw nothing wrong with it. And then he said... 
she goes, so if I wanted to go, I couldn't go. He goes, well, you could drop us off. <laughs> drop us off. Oh, it, everybody, the two other guys and her just wow. looked at him like, and then he, he was like, what? <laughs> Why are y'all looking at me like that? Oh my God, sir, to exclude on sex or religion or race, and you're totally fine with that? So then me and Lewis looked it up. They claim that they've never had a female applicant. Now, in real life, I don't like to go to places where I'm not welcome. And if you're that much of a group of men that don't want women around, I, I'm not a fighter. I'm not, I, if, it was, if, if I was in charge, women would, still wouldn't even vote because I'd be too lazy. And I'd go, well, they don't care about our opinion. Like, I am not a, a trailblazer. Um, I mean, I would have been during Prohibition. I'd have got really mad about that. But so Lewis said, why don't you apply? But then they have all these things. It's like $250,000. I said, I don't have $250,000, Lewis, to lay. He goes, I do. So what if he's my sponsor? And what if I apply? Oh, boy, here we go. Right? See, I don't like to start fights, but Lou's really into it. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe if he's my co-signer, like a loan, or, or if he just puts two hundred fifty in my bank account, and then I can show I have it. Right. But see, my next question would be, but Lewis, I don't want to play with a bunch of people who don't want to play with me. I want to play with guys that like playing with women, not guys that think, we're, and, and I guarantee you, I could probably beat some of them. Yeah. yeah. Not that that matters, but if, it's because they think all women suck, right. which is ridiculous. No, they, don't. they don't. And you know what I found out in my mom's ladies league? Hmm. Whatever the case, women are faster. They yes. pick up. Oh. Yeah, a man... Just not all men. I'm not generalizing. I'm generalizing, but that doesn't mean every person. I'm not going to name names in my life, but I know people that will men that will look for a ball until everyone screams at them, you can't look for the ball anymore. Right. I mean, it could go on 6, 10, 14 minutes. Right. No, well, I think it was right. Just drop it. Nobody gives a fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, anyway, that is way too much sports talk, but that's what's been happening as I drink out of my buckies. <laughs> Mm. Um, a termite just tweeted me too. Oklahoma's getting a new Bucky's. I don't know exactly where. I got to go back and reread it. It was incoming this morning. So in order of so yes, I want the Bengals to win. I don't know what the line is. I think it's seven. Speaking of which, as long before I talk about what we're eating, mattress Mac update. He bet four point five million on the Bengals. Straight up, just to win. Just to win. There's no points. If he wins, I love this guy. I want to be his friend. They get four and a half right now. He's another one that people say, well, you know, he supports a lot of Republicans. I don't care. <laughs> I think he seems like a fun guy. <laughs> um, Mattress Mac won big Super Bowl. Blah, blah, blah. He's going bigger. This is a, He drove himself from Texas to Louisiana so that he could place a bet on his phone. I guess uh, I haven't checked. Well, I've done it a lot. I pre-bet in states that I'm in in case I'm flying to states I'm not in. And then I have to Google all that shit. But I must have done my pre-Texas bets before I went to Texas. Um, he bet $4,534,000 on the Bengals' money line over the Rams. At um, If he wins, he will win $7,707,800. It's the largest mobile sports wager of all time and the second largest Super Bowl wager ever placed, trailing a, um, a $4.9 million bet in 2002. I don't know who made that. According to ESPN, he drove <laughs> from Texas into Louisiana, placed the bet on his phone while pulled over at a gas station. It was placed with Caesars Sportsbook. Wow. I don't use that app. No. no. Their ads are cheap. I don't like their ads, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, he's he's all in on the Bengals. And then everybody gets mattresses for sale and all this stuff. It's a promo <laughs> for him. I, it's just a great idea. Last year, he won $2.7 million on a $3.46 million wager on the Buccaneers. He's become known for his tying his eye-catching wagers into the promotions of his future, of his furniture company. So, oh. that, yeah, so speaking of betting, me and Mattress Mac are hoping for the same thing. I love that they're, they can't do online betting in Texas, so he got in the car and drove to Louisiana. Depending on where he is, that could be a very long drive or a very short drive. Why is he in Houston? Yeah, he is in Houston, so it's about three hours to the border, I think. Well, I don't know where he went. But. 
fun road trip, especially, he probably wasn't driving. Maybe he was. He seems like a guy who would drive himself. Um, <laughs> in honor of Valentine's Day, look what Fruit Loops made. <gasps> no. Yeah. How great is that? Yeah. I'm going to pour a box and make a video. Really? Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, supposedly. <laughs> Irregardless. Right. Well, <laughs> How many can I say to irritate everybody in one fell swoop? So you have um, and then for a little Super Bowl, here's the thing. I am going to make a couple, a couple of my mom's Super Bowl dips. Great. I don't know if I've ever made them on. I'll put it up on YouTube because I've changed her rye dip. I've gone half Miracle Whip, half Dukes. Oh, wow. Yep. Uh -huh. The Miracle Whip brings the tang. You got to have some in there. This is, my parents are very upset because they say there's no Philadelphia that cream cheese anywhere. Orange, orange. It's orange, orange. It's Buffalo style. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, buffalo cream cheese? Buffalo Philadelphia cream cheese. Whipped. Wow. Do you like it? It's great. Wow. Less put, calories, too, then. Put that out in a giant hunk on a board. <laughs> It'll be gone in five seconds. It'll melt. That is great. Uh, wow. Uh, well, my mom was crabbing that they didn't have cream cheese at the grocery store in Florida. There you go. That's why I said go back to Missouri. Mm -hmm. Plenty available. <laughs> Plenty available. Now, this. This I got in the Midwest, but it somewhere. I just thought it looked interesting, but... Um, it's made in, La in Brea, California, home of what? The Brea Improv, which, yes, I worked a million times. Um, this is a deep fried pick. Have you ever had deep fried pickles? Yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah. Well, this is a deep fried pickle dip by Dean's Dairy Dip Sports Bar. They're trying to make sports bar things into dips. Let's see if it succeeded. Okay. Wow. Really pickly. <laughs> wow. It's great. Your eyes crossed. <laughs> it's great, but you got to do small, uh, tiny bites. <laughs> tiny bites. It's great, though. It'd be really good on broccoli. Oh, they have a... Raw broccoli. They have a pub series. A pub series? Yep. I'll go for them. They got Nashville hot dip. Nashville hot dip. Okay, that'd be good. Buffalo wing dip. Buffalo wing dip. I'd like that. Yep. Pepperoni pizza dip. Nah, that's yeah. for the children. Yeah. yeah. Wow. My nephew. Right. The nephews would eat it. Great. All right. Moving on, termites. So many things. Update. <laughs> Flying car cleared for takeoff, but you'll need a pilot's license. Oh, God. Now, here's the friend. Here's the thing. Me and Lewis, our friend Drew. Uh -huh. Drew is a financial advisor. Um, but he also got his pilot's license in his in later in life too. I might add. So we would have to have Drew do it. Okay. But then I asked Lou, "Would you get in it?" He goes, "Do you mean with Drew?" <laughs> said, yes. He goes, "No. Would you?" <laughs> said, well, no. But that's not because I doubt his flying abilities as much as I don't know that in his classes yet he's done a flying car. Uh -oh. But this is what I'm talking about. This is the future. The good future coming our way. And you ought to see that. Well, we'll put the video in the show notes because it's amazing. It looks like well, my youngest brother had all those transformer things as a kid. It looks like a transformer. A car that can transform into a small aircraft has passed test flights with flying colors in Slovakia. The air car was awarded an official certificate of airworthiness by the Slovak Transport Authority after completing seven hours of rigorous fight, flight testing. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a dual mode car, Eric. So it looks like a race car, like kind of like almost like a mix of a NASCAR and a Formula One. It looks like a flying car. It does not look like a flying airplane. airplane? It looks okay. like a car that grew wings. The test flights, which included more than 200 takeoffs and landings, were compatible with European avi aviation standards. The company said the challenging the challenging flight tests included a full range of flight performance maneuvers and has demonstrated an astonishing Static and dynamic stability in the aircraft mode. Um, the, you have to have a pilot's license, and it, to re, and you're required to have that to fly it, and added that the company hopes to have air car commercially available in 12 months. Come on. Well, I'm going to get Drew on this right now <laughs> and tell him 
A team of eight specialists clocked more than 100,000 hours converting design concepts into mathematical models that led to the prototype's production. The air car is powered by a 1.6 L BMW. We don't care about all that. Blah, blah, blah. It can fly at 18,000 feet. I don't think I want to go that high. No. I'm too scared. I just want to go above the trees. You know, just above the tree line. Power lines, mm-hmm. yeah. But the yeah. trees are usually higher than the power lines. I just don't, if I crash, I don't want it to be certain death. Okay. I want it to be questionable. No problem. In June, the flying car completed a 35-minute flight test between the airports and two places in Slovakia. After landing, the aircraft converted into a car and was driven into the city center. Now, come on. That's what we're talking about. That's wonderful. Um, we'll put it in the show notes what it looks like. Okay. And they have a video of it flying and everything. It's how great. Long does it, fly for? How long? it doesn't say how long it can go. I didn't understand that either. Like, well, this thing, it took 35 minutes, so we know it can go that far. Yeah, I don't know. We'll find out more as that comes. Update! <laughs> this man I put on the same level in my little, my little shelves of hate. <laughs> tiny shelves with tiny bobbleheads of Stan Kroenke and who? Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, my God. He warned his staff that he might cry after Facebook lost a shit ton of money. I believe $200, $200 billion in a day. Good. Why? Because for the first time ever, they were down a half a million logins for whatever period they analyze. Well, here's I'm going to read it. He's he's getting old. I mean, as far as the way he's thinking or he's not hanging around enough young people, super young. I mean 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Drink. You need to hang around those people if you want to know what the future is. <laughs> Marcus Zuckerberg told his staff that he may cry because he had scratched his eyes just hours, so it wasn't because he was sad. I don't even think he's capable of being sad. I don't think he has normal emotions. Just after his company lost $174 billion, but that's in euros, so it was $200 billion in um, dollars. In its biggest one-day st- drop in the stock market, new figures released as part of the parent company, uh, Meta's latest financial results show that daily users of Facebook fell to $1.9 billion in the last three months compared to... Well, it's one point nine two billion in the last three months compared to one point nine three billion. So Meta's shares fell. I can't even say Meta without laughing. And apparently somebody went into the metaverse and got sexually harassed and raped and ran out. Like I don't even understand how that can happen. What? Why would you ever go back in that spot? Well, I don't know. Meta shares fell from twenty two percent to $249 in after hours trading following the announcement. Zucker saw almost 22 billion pounds. Well, pounds, I don't know what that is in money, but um, he admitted that the rise of rival apps such as TikTok is having an impact on Facebook with Meta, also warning the slow revenue growth because of the growth competition and a reduction in spending among advertisers. People have a lot of choices how they want to spend their time, and apps like TikTok are growing very quickly, he said. Yes. Yes. My 13-year-old nieces, they only commun- communicate through Snapchat. Right. And they love TikTok. If you do TikTok, it it's like doing cocaine. Instagram's like smoking weed. It's way yeah. slower. Yeah. It's chill. There's no, there's no crazy shit. I mean, I talk about this in my act, but I won't go into all that. But the, the children uh-huh. are not signing up for Facebook. No. And I hope, I hope to God that's the end. I hope that my nieces and nephews, that, that, that age group, the younger ones, not my older nieces and nephews, because they signed up. And then people in subdivisions have to sign up. Like there's, I think I've talked about all that. I won't go into it again. Right. But I, they need an alternative. Yeah. It should be called like family and friends. And it's literally just your family and friends and your neighborhood and maybe your school. Or my subdivision. My subdivision. Yeah. My world. My HOA. My world. My world. No, that's too close to my space. It's a good spitballing. It's a good spitballing start. Paddles didn't even know what no, spitballing, spitballing was. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you know, spitballing. Yeah, it's Throwing ideas around. Um, now, see, Facebook owns Instagram. But Instagram, if you, once you go on TikTok, going to, on, back on Instagram seems boring. I just happen to like boring. Yeah. And there's so many strange things on TikTok that I just go through and go, 
why do I want to know about this? I was raised in a cult till I was nine. And then I went to foster care. Oh, no, no, I don't want to know that. Not unless I know you. Um, so I'm hoping this is the beginning. I mean, I have my work Facebook page because there's a lot of people that still enjoy Facebook and are on it. And I want them to know where I'm going to be at. But other than that, I would not do it. 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 Um, this is just another one on that. It's losing users for the first time ever. And shares of Meta have fallen off a cliff. That's another thing. The Metaverse ain't picking up speed. Mm -hmm. Nobody's into it. No. Nope. Uh-uh. Well, I had one of those goggle things, whatever, one Christmas. <laughs> New Year's Eve, I put it on Lou. And he was just walking around the house with it on going, oh, oh, ah, oh, ah. Because it just took you into rooms, but you don't know where you're stepping. It was interesting on a boring, cold New Year's Eve. But do I want to do it? No. No. But then again, maybe. You should, you should post that. Maybe I'm in that video. Yeah. My God, I don't know if I yeah. still I don't know if I still have it. I'll have you find it. My God. It was, it was like watching a person who suddenly came, became blind and then throwing them in a maze. Like he was just, it was, it was funny to watch, but I put it on. Update! Oh yeah. my God, this makes me, this, this is just, only in, in my life I've never heard of anything like this. Crystal Symphony and Crystal Serenity arrested in Freeport in the Bahamas. So the two oh, cruise really? ships that the repo man was after, I can't even imagine, like what kind of boat is the repo man do I need to have to get, capture these guys and to, by towing them i mean that's what you do with a car right. or a, a boat you, if you repo it you tow it I can't. this Can is crazy that? according to crew members on the crystal cruises crystal symphony and crystal serenity these are the ones we talked about last week that the, they dump the people off and then skedaddled out uh -huh. where do you think you're going you can't get gas anymore right. you owe 4.6 million dollars in a gas tab that you and guess what Every gas station knows it. Right. When they see you two rock up, they're like, Ixne on the gas A. No. Uh, this is on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over Facebook. Both cruise ships are now arrested due to non-payment of fuel expenses. Early yesterday, we were noted that crew wages were current as of January. However, other Crystal crew members insist that they're still waiting. They're not paying the employees for waiting payment, uh, payments for last month, and they've recently received nothing in their Brightwell payment accounts. We've also received this, received this message yesterday afternoon. Symphony, one of the ships, is out of food, so they will have to be taking on provisions. Serenity is out of fuel. Management says if you want to go home early, if you didn't complete your three-month contract, this is for the employees, um, you need to resign and buy your own flight ticket to go home. Oh, wow. Yeah. The arrest of these two is related to the non-payment of $4.6 million in fuel. They've stayed out of U.S. ports after a federal district court judge in Miami entered into order last week. It's unclear if these two ships were seized in the Bahamas, which is not subject to the jurisdiction of the U.S. Marshal's office. However, the Crystal Serenity was, the Crystal Serenity was at sea on Thursday, sailing without passengers off the coast of Florida in international waters after leaving Bimini, Bimini, Bimini in the Bahamas. The ship, yeah, had previously been denied point, uh, denied port in Aruba and disembarked its passengers there rather than risk the idea of a port in Miami. There was considerable bedlam in disembarking its guest. Bedlam. You don't see that word often used in print. No. <laughs> what a dreadful, what a dreadful disgrace to end this so-called luxury cruise. Uh, crystal cruises leave hundreds of travelers in the cold in long lines, no reps, no help for the older passengers, including my grandparents. That does suck. I don't care how rich people are. Because most, if you're on this cruise line, you got a little bit of cashola. Yeah. Um, if you don't, you're on Carnival, where a lot of my friends can't wait to get on. Um, these, though, you know, are supposed to be a step up. I hate it when I see old people, like in the airport, it happens a lot, when they'll just cancel a flight. And I see people my parents' age standing there, and they walk over to those red, red phones, phones that are on the wall. I'm like, oh, my God, no, 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 no. That phone calls 1974, and no one's home. Don't pick up the phone. Don't stand in line to wait. And then they go to the front. It's just they don't know how to use an app. They don't. It just sucks. Like, 
they should be helped first. Anybody that doesn't understand how to use their phone right, come over here. They were stuck in the freezing cold for over two hours, then another three hours between the ferry and the bus line. Um, Oh, my God. Somebody put on Twitter, pay your fucking bills and stop taking money from passengers. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, people get mad in those situations, and they're going to write crazy shit on social media, and whose fault is that? It's the, the, the holding company in Hong Kong, Hong Kong something that owns them. How'd that happen? You're going to blame them. Um, the COVID? Covidious? Everybody blames COVID. I know. <laughs> COVID is a wonderful excuse if you're a slacker, because I've used it. I've used it enough. But not on major things. Mine are on, like, stupid things that are boring. I don't know. Like, you were supposed to get a two-year registration for the boat, and the, and I'm like, yeah, I know, but it was all back then. Like, it doesn't matter as right. long as I do it eventually. <laughs> but when you're using shit like that, I mean, every other cruise ship's sailing around. Right. Why didn't you pay your gas bill? And who gives you that kind of credit? You rock up and go, can I have $2 million worth of gas? Yeah, forgot my wallet. How much does it cost to fill up your boat? Mm-hmm. To fill up, it's a 26-foot, well, it might be 27 feet. I don't know. About $150. So a cruise ship. (laughs) Now, the great thing is my fishing boat, the bass boat, it only costs like $5 and it lasts forever because that's an outboard motor. If anything ever goes wrong on planet Earth, I am set with the bass boat. I can go forever and I can get gas from the gas station anywhere I want and just shove it in there. Um, So if you're ever, if you were thinking about. uh, going on crystal cruise lines. Um, don't. No. Oh my god. Update. Oh. You know I'm a little obsessed with Harry and Meghan. Yes. I'm obsessed that people are obsessed with them. Mm-hmm. As far as I can see, neither one has accomplished hardly anything. And they're full of shit. Well, I do think they're full of shit, but yeah. that, but you know, let's say that other people don't. What? Well, well, I'm not an Anglophile. I, as an Irish person, the British royal family, whenever they say, oh, the British royal family is vacationing, I, want, I scream at the television, from what? Right. Your whole life is a vacation. Right. And then I know I sound like a dock worker from Jersey. <laughs> you goddamn never worked a goddamn day in your life, you stupid son of a bitch. Well, but I do feel that way. So maybe that's where my leanings lie. So they accepted $18 million from Spotify. We discussed this. They've dur- turned in 33 minutes worth of homework. That's it. So Spotify then said, holy shit, like they're just not going to do anything. We're taking over. They, they put out ads for producers. They put out ads for bookers. Like we got to make a show with these people one way or another. Maybe they don't know how to make a show, which why would they? Right. I mean, I don't, as far as I know, he never had any job except he was in the British Army. And I do believe, like I said, he can fly a helicopter. So maybe we could have him do that. She's an actress of... Do I think he's kept up his helicopter license? No, I think Drew needs to drive up there and bust into the $14 million Montecito estate and take Harry and knock some sense into him because Drew is a very responsible, up older brother, father-like figure that could maybe... Great great reality show. Yeah. Flying Harry. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Drew, and he won't let you get away with shit, too. Drew's very detailed. Um, So they've expressed their concerns to Spotify over, shall we call it, the recent events. But you're not giving the money back. No. If you're that concerned and you think it's a piece of shit or you don't like that they're promoting other people that are saying things that are offensive right. in your mind, um, give them the money back. Walk, walk away, as my friend Greg Warren would say. Walk away. Um, <laughs> and they still haven't produced a show. Week by week. I'm going to keep track. Who? 18 million. For what? Right. This is where Americans drop so many balls. Um, but then also, so this week, Harry, this is last week, he did, he did some, he, he's the guy that they paid to be part of Better Up as a chief impact officer, which isn't even a, a job. That's just a made up title, yeah. right? Uh, they just need famous people. It's like the new way to say you're on the board. 
Right. <laughs> People's names are just on boards. Um, so Prince Harry spoke at this thing, and this is the word salad. First of all, if we're going to talk about mental health, that's fine. I'm a fan of that. But I want it to come from people that actually have, have it, well, degrees would be my first choice. Do you have a degree in this? Have you studied this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Prince Harry offered his own woke guide to business today. Business. He's never been in a business or ran a business. This is where if I was one of those people, like sometimes my brother has to attend those conferences and now they scan you in and out with a barcode so they know if you were there. Not like the old days where you could just pop in and go, I got to go to the bathroom and then no just way. go down to the beach bar. No, now they kind of know. They know when you scan in and out and all this shit. So people had to sit through this. This is a virtual conference for better today. Whatever that is. I don't even know. I didn't even have the interest to Google it. Uh, Serena Williams was on it. That's fine. She's accomplished a lot. I'll listen to Serena if she wants to talk about pressure or whatever. These are the same people when I do corporate gigs. These are the motivational people in the day that I just go. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and my mom go steal their breakfast food. Because <laughs> they're all in the thing now. And the but you don't know this, but like if there's a big conference in a hotel, once you hear the ding ding and they all have to go in that room, their breakfast buffet is still open. In the hall. In the hall, and they don't know that I'm not with them, and no employee ever says nothing. Yeah. I'm just like, morning, and it's <laughs> me and my mom. My mom, I caught my mom one time on the road. She went with my dad somewhere for work. She was at a duck callers, the Midwest duck calling <laughs> championship breakfast, and she was sitting in there with them. And I went in and I go, Mom, what are you fucking doing? Oh, you hear? They have these tools that the duck callers. And she's like, well, I mean, I stole their breakfast. The least I could do was listen to what they had to say. It's very interesting. I don't know why your father doesn't duck hunt. I mean, other people duck hunt. I think it's, a, she goes, I picked up one of the things. Listen to me. And she was doing it the whole time. Going, wah, wah, wah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, um, this is, uh, Harry told everybody they should give, everyone should have time to focus on themselves. Well, you do. You do. You have a lot of time. You have every day off. Yeah. You can focus on yourself all day long. <laughs> He's speaking from his $14 million, million dollar mansion in California with Meghan Markle. Uh, they have a series of endorsements to pay to represent brands, spoke on a virtual panel. It was all virtual. He didn't even have to go. Uh, they joked and chatted for about three hours. That's another thing I, I can't stand. Will you call me for a chat? Nope, because I'm not British. I'll call and talk to you. I'll call and bitch at you or bitch with you. Mm-hmm. Wow. He claimed that he had suffered burnout. Harry did. Oh, From what? Right. Being a prince? Yeah. Now, I wouldn't want to be a member of the royal family because you have to attend a lot of um, ribbon-cutting things. But is it, is it hard? No. Is it boring? Yes. Yeah. Have you ever bartended for two shifts in a row? 14 hours pulling up bar mats? No, of course he hasn't. Uh -huh. That's hard. It hurts your back. I know because yeah. I've done it. Harry, or weighted, weighted tables, a double shift. You're so goddamn tired by the end, your feet hurt. Um, my feet hurt when that was when I was young. I can't imagine if I had to do it now. He said, from an employer perspective, you can't expect your people to be put to be put in the work on themselves when you're not giving the time to do that. Wow. I don't think an employer cares if people are doing work on themselves. They want them at work, right. doing work for them. Yeah. He has lessons from the universe. When bad things happen, I think, wow. there's a lesson here. I'm being schooled by the universe. There's something for me to learn. This is, I do not understand why anyone would take the time unless, you know, it's your relative. I, I don't, people, wait, here's, here's some of his suggestions. Oh, can't wait. You ready? Mm -hmm. Aim for the pinnacle of mental fitness. Mental fitness is a pinnacle. If that's what you're aiming for, the road towards that can be really bumpy. Uh -huh. Inner work. The only way you can combat burnout and build resilience for the outside world and your entire, you know, all, all of this can be summed up and take a nap. Right. I'm a big fan of naps. I like a nap. Daily meditation. He, there are all these British people that went ape shit on Twitter going, well, I'm glad he has time for daily meditation. Let me set my alarm for four. Right. Because I already get up at five. Because he talks about how he, he has to do these things when the one kid's asleep and the other kid is uh, off to kindergarten or whatever, preschool. Mm -hmm. 
Not mentioning you have 50 employees within probably your own home. Right. There's, you're not doing this shit like it's normal it's people do it. Right. He puts in about a half hour, 45 minutes in the morning when one kid has gone to school and the other one's having a nap. There's a break in our program. Program. Your life program. <laughs> wow. He has a lot of me time. He listens to the universe. He turns negatives into positives and surrounds himself with mental coaches. The, the, the tone deaf level. We'll see. Wow. I'll keep you updated, termites. I want Prince Harry to I'm just telling you, she's going to make him move to L.A. Mark my words. You heard it here first. She's crazy. Update. This is a crazy one. It's not even a tiny update. No? No, but I always feel like I should whisper because. He could still be alive and hurt me. Ooh. John McAfee. Oh, he Remember, yeah. he followed me on Twitter. Yeah. Why the hell would that man follow me on Twitter? Uh, yeah. He listened to the podcast. Maybe he did. Maybe in he his Spanish shirt. prison. He bought a shirt. His body is still stuck in his Spanish prison morgue as the fight rages over his legacy. Oh, God. His body is in a freezer. Oh. Even in death, the John McAfee saga grows stronger. Stranger. More than seven months after he died, his body remains in a prison morgue somewhere near Barcelona. His daughter and ex-wife waged a legal fight over the body, and a Spanish judge is continuing to conduct an investigation over the cause of death. I'm not going to go read the whole article, because it really is a summation of what all termites already know, if you've been listening to this for a long time. And if you haven't, you should go watch that documentary, I forgot what it's called, on his life. I've never seen it. It's so goddamn crazy. Gringo. Gringo. That was great. Yeah, I may need to rewatch that. Yeah. Speaking of what 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 are we watching? Because I've had a little time. Right. Um, I would uh, advise everyone that values any of their time: do not watch on Netflix a mother in a window watching something across the street. Blah. blah. I don't even know what the title is, but it's uh, it says popular, so I decided to watch it, and it suckers you in because you want to know what happens. But it's so hokey oh. and so bad. As the epi- but the episodes are only 25 minutes, and that's how you get sucked in, too, because you're like, well, just one more, because I want to see what happens. It, it, I don't know if it was supposed to be funny, but it wasn't. And then if it was supposed to be for reals, it wasn't. It, and I haven't had a regret that long, that in a while, that, that I was so pissed, except for this is you. No. What, just, what was that one about the serial killer guy? Oh, be- you. You. Yeah. Right, not this is that this is us yeah. as a sitcom. This now I sound like my mother. Is the woman in the house across the street the woman from the girl in the window. In the house across the street from the girl across in the window. Yeah, from the girl in the window. I'm just saying don't. Or if you do, watch like the fifth episode where Kristen Bell's good. The actors were all great. Yeah. I had no problems with anybody. The premise is, it, the premise is ridiculous. Yeah. And the story gets even more ridiculous. Yeah. Update! I'll tell you what you should watch, though. Uh, the Tinder Swindler. Yeah, that was good. That was great. Um, because it is just unbelievable to me what people will do for other people that they barely know, meaning cashola. Like, I've given strangers, you know, here's 20 bucks, go get a pizza. Right. But, like, no. That thing and the fact that the man is out and on the prowl again I don't understand, of course, what he did is illegal. If I ask you to give me money and you're dumb enough to do it, um, I do admire these women for coming on, though, because they got to feel stupid. They say they feel stupid, and they feel ashamed because they are that stupid, and I would feel super stupid. So at least they came forward and said, that, so he doesn't keep doing it to other people. They put themselves second, which was very nice to try to help, but fuck, now he's out what, again. What else are you watching? It's the Olympics. I'm watching the Olympics. Yeah. I... I'm an old person. I still love the Olympics. I don't like when it's in different time zones because then I have very far away time zones because then I have to avoid social media all day long. Which you won't. I can't. Only Facebook. Yeah, I haven't seen Facebook in 11 years. (laughs) (laughs) No, I have a real work Facebook page. Speaking of which, Mm -hmm. there are other fan pages out there that has come to my attention that are not me. I have nothing to do with them. People are joining them thinking it's my real one. That's what pisses me off. Because I, if you're going to join one, please join the real one. Right. But they don't know. Right. 
And then, then I get emails, hey, man, I'm on this fan site, and I want, there's some, like, people post whatever. I can't control. I can't delete them. I can't do nothing. It's, 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 and then I always think, I'm just a comedian, like, with a pretty solid termite fan base, but nothing crazy. Like, what, is, what happens with a Taylor Swift? She must have 20 people or more all day long just doing this shit. Well, this fan page reposts everything I do, but it's already on mine. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Bad. It's confusing for people, and I don't understand why it's like the way, the way it is, what it is. Anyway, here's my update. <laughs> this one makes me laugh. Because in late in life, my dad took a gig as a judge because a guy died. Okay. And I said, we all made fun of him. I go, is this how you get your gigs now, Dad? Other people got to die. Are you in that age bracket now where people are dropping like flies? You just get gigs because you're alive. <laughs> he was, my dad was an appellate court judge for a while there. So this is another reason I would never do this because this is the headline. Judge's son who stormed Capitol dressed as a caveman pleads guilty. What? <laughs> this is one of our traitor termites. Traitor, traitor, who invaded the Capitol. A judge's son who stormed the Capitol on January 6th while clad in fur. And I remember seeing this guy while this was happening live. And I'm like, first I thought he was a teddy bear. What? I did. <laughs> he, his outfit is confusing. He thinks he looks like a caveman. Okay. My first thing was like, oh, it's a teddy bear. Why is a teddy bear acting bad? Badly. Why is a teddy bear carrying a spear? Um, it's, not the, it's not the guy with the horns and stuff. Not that one. It's a different one. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes. You can see his picture. Yeah. Um, he pleaded guilty Wednesday to three counts during a virtual court hearing. Aaron Mostofsky, a 35-year-old from Brooklyn, pleaded guilty to one count of civil disorder, one count of theft of government property, and one count of entering and remaining in a restricted building. They accepted his plea and set a sentencing uh, date for May. Sentencing okay. hearing for May. We'll be on top of that. Under the terms of his agreement, they will drop the charges that subjected him to the longest potential prison sentences on obstruction of official proceeding. Uh, he, he pleaded guilty to a felony charge that made it unlawful to obstruct, impede, and interfere with the enforcement of a law officer. What these people don't realize, too, is most states, once you become a felony, you can't vote anymore. So this whole idea that True. we love Trump, and, you know, no matter what, if he does run again, they can't even vote for him. Eventually, those things become expunged, according to Ron White. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long it takes for a felony charge to go off your record, but for a while, in most states, the irony is now they can't even vote for their hero that they went to on behalf of. Right. Yeah. Um, but here's the reason why. This guy's, ju this guy's dad is a judge, Stephen Mustofsky of the King's Supreme Court New in New York. The younger Mostovsky told the New York Post that during the Capitol riot that he believed President Trump's supporters were cheated and that certain states were, quote, stolen. He admitted traveling to D.C. by bus and was dressed as a caveman carrying a walking stick or rod when he entered the Capitol. He explained <coughs> to a friend that the fraud in 2020 uh, presidential election was so obvious that even a caveman would know the election was stolen. So that's why he did it. Wow. That's, that's pretty insightful. <laughs> he pushed a cop. He was approximately the 12th person to enter the Capitol through the Senate wing doors after rioters smashed the windows and broke open the door. Uh, oh, he also picked up a bulletproof vest outside the Capitol and grabbed a police Capitol Police riot shield in, once he was inside the building. The plea offer was extended. We will see. What happened? So far, the FBI has made 700 arrests in connection with the January 60s. So the caveman, <laughs> they should put him in the same cell with the guy who had the horns. You know, the guy from Arizona. I forget what they called him already. Um, shaman. The shaman. Yeah. yeah. Put the caveman and the shaman together. Right? right? Moving on to what? Holy shit, they found it. It's a great segment. Lewis didn't understand this one. Nope. But I didn't have the time to explain it to him either. Mm -hmm. I love, um, is this Smithsonian? 
Well, I like LiveScience.com, too, if you've never been there. If you like weird shit, yeah. This is a rare bionic armor, dis- rare bionic armor discovered in the in in um, a twenty five hundred year old China burial. Oh, wow. And Lou's like, they couldn't have had bionic things back then. I'm like, just give me a minute to explain, Louis. <laughs> About twenty five hundred years ago, a man in northeast northwest China was buried with armor made of more than five thousand leather scales. A military garment fashioned so intricately, its design looked like overlapping scales of a fish. It's oh. a good idea. Yeah. The armor, which resembles an apron-like waistcoat, could um, could be donned quickly without the help of another person. Whoa. So, it's a light, highly efficient, one-size-fits-all defensive garment for soldiers of a mass army. The team called it an early example of bionics, which bionics means taking inspiration from nature, and f- for human technology. In this case, the fish-like overlapping leather scales strengthen human skin for better defense against blows, stab, and shot. Huh. Yeah, there's a picture of it. It's crazy looking. Researchers unearthed the leather garment at Yanghai Cemetery, an archaeological site near the city of Turfan, which sits at the rim of Takamakalapapapa Desert. <laughs> Local villagers discovered the ancient cemetery in the early 1970s. Since 2003, archaeologists have excavated more than 500 burials there, including the grave with leather armor. Their findings show that ancient people used the cemetery continuously, blah, blah, blah. The armor is a rare find. Leather ar- scale armor was discovered in an ancient Egyptian tomb of whom? King Tut. So he knew about it too. Um, the only other well, uh, that's the only other well-preserved ancient leather scale armor with, uh, with a known provenance. Right. Nice. Provence, provenance. Another well-preserved leather scale housed at the Metrop- Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City dates from the 8th century and the 3rd century B.C., but its origin is unknown. So there you go. If you can get to the Met in New York, you can see one in real life. Yeah, good times for everybody, right? Totally. The coolest thing was one of the times I was in New York, probably four years ago, the Discovery Channel, when Vikings was on, uh-huh. one of my favorite all-time shows of all time, uh-huh. um, they had the Vikings, the Discovery Channel put the Vikings exhibit in New York so you could go see all the Vikings stuff. Oh, cool. See, this is how you trick, like, younger, the 20-somethings. Uh-huh. If they go, oh, I just saw the show, yep. and then they want to go see the stuff that, yeah. Uh-huh. This is creepy. Cool. Here's it. I have two more holy shits. They found it. Holy shits. Yeah. <laughs> Nearly 200 human spines found threaded onto posts in Peru. Oh. Yeah, where do you see the picture? Oh, wow. I don't want to be buried standing up no. on a post. No. Well, I mean, who cares? You're dead, you're dead, I guess. But almost 200 examples of human spines threaded onto reed posts have been discovered in Peru, revealing a unique way of treating the dead that has never previously been documented in the region. An international team of researchers working in the city of Chincha Valley on Peru's southern coast. Chincha. I think that's right. C H I N C H A. Chincha. It's a funny word. Um, they found the majority of the vertebrae on post in large indigenous graves known as, known as chupas, which date back hundreds of years to around the time that European colonizers were present in the South American country. Of the 192 spines found on posts in the regions, archaeologists found that in almost every case they were made of the remain they were made from the remains of a single individual. Well, right. I mean, it's one spine. Right. It appears that adults and juveniles in the indigenous community were the ones chosen for this unique practice. And according to the researchers, the vertebrae on posts were thought to have been created between 1450 and 1650. Oh. As the Incan rule came to an end and European colonization became widespread and, the dom- and dominant in the region. It's bizarre. Before the arrival of Europeans, eh, da, 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 it doesn't matter. Let me see if they tell you why. Analysis of the spines on the post say they might have been created to repair the damage done by the dead to the dead by looting. Oh. Hmm. Radiocarbon date, dating conducted by the team research shows that the threading of the spine onto the reed post occurred after the initial burial of the bodies. Hmm. So it's all about looting? I guess. It is. Well, it says... It says Looting of indigenous graves was widespread across the Chincha Valley in the colonial period. Looting was primarily intended to remove grave goods made of gold and silver uh, that would have gone hand-in-hand hand with Europeans' efforts to eradicate indigenous religious practices and funerary customs. Oh. 
Yeah. Is that all you had to do when you got to a brand new country is gra- be a grave robber? Yeah, our findings suggest that the vertebrae on a post represent a direct, ritualized, and indigenous response to European uh, colonialism. Wow. So, I, I, that's just not something I want to stumble upon. No. 200 human spines found threaded on a post, but interesting nonetheless. One last history, holy shit, they found it, but I can't be sure they found it. What? I know. Yeah. Well, first of you know all. You that is? It's not fake news. <laughs> Maybe. For, the first article I saw, Captain Cook's famed Endeavour ship found off Rhode Island. That's okay. what the Australians say. Cool. Then Oz, the Aussies say James Cook's ship was found. The U.S. says not so fast. <laughs> okay. the re- this is crazy because I learned all about Captain James Cook when I did all my Australian g- gigs because I went out on all the tours like a nerd. So the wreck of British uh, explorer Captain James Cook and his ship, the Endeavour, the vessel in which he sailed in a historic voyage from Australia to New Zealand between 1768 and 1771 has been found off the coast of uh, U.S. state Rhode Island. This is what Australian researchers say. Since 1999, we've been investigating several 18th century ships in a two-square-mile where we believe the Endeavour sank, so-and-so said at a media briefing. So they're calling it out. I mean, they're having media... Briefing saying, we're not kidding. Based on archival and archaeological evidence, I'm convinced it's the endeavor. The focus is on how we can, only 15% of it is left. Okay. That kind of sucks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, both the U.S. team, but the U.S. team of research is also involved in its effort to locate the vessel. Slam the announcement is premature. In a statement, executive director of the Rhode Island Marine Archaeology, archaeology Project uh, said the Australians were guilty of a breach of contract, adding that conclusions will be driven by proper scientific process and not Australian emotions or politics. <laughs> Whoa, everybody. Sit Let's down. simmer down. Now we have a super nerd fight. Totally. Yeah, super nerd. Wow. What we see on the shipwreck site yeah. under study is, it cons- is consistent with what might be expected of the endeavor, but there's been no indisputable data to found to prove that the site is that of the iconic vessel. And there are many unanswered questions that could overturn such an identification. When the study is done, Rhode Island something, something will post the legitimate report. The Australian Museum, in turn, denied violating any partnership agreement, and they are entitled to their own opinion regarding the vast amount of evidence that they have accumulated. Exactly. Um, he didn't even... Um, the claim of da, da, da. Cook killed himself in Hawaii, in case you're... It, it, Cook himself was killed. I think he was eaten. I think, so. I think he was eaten. Yeah, he was killed in Hawaii in 1779 while attempting to detain his ruling chief just month, months after his former ship was sunk. Um, the British used that ship, so that's why it was in Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah, they... Um, it was scuttled by the British in August of 1778 to block a French fleet from entering the harbor to support the Americans in the war. The Americans in the War of Independence. The ship, flat bottom, Whitby Collier, well suited to shallow waters, was first launched. And da, 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 da. it was purchased by the British Navy and fitted. So that's where his ship ended up with the Brits. Oh. And then they brought it over here. Okay. And there you go. So my holy shit, they found it is kind of on hold. Okay. Uh, who do you believe? I believe the Australians. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it gets Rhode Island. No. Rhode but I think the Australians have more of a vested interest in finding it. I do too. We have lots of sh- ships we can find. Move along. Yeah. This is so cool, and I can't wait for it. We're on to news. I can't wait oh, for you guys to see these pictures if you haven't. Because I know all about a Black Panther. I didn't know there were black tigers. Well, I do know about the Black Panthers as well. <laughs> yes. Because mm-hmm. wow. I watched the Malcolm X show. Ultra rare black tigers photographed in Odisha. Odisha. I don't know how to say it. Mm-hmm. It's in India. No um, all of it's a melatonin thing. The, like a black panther really isn't black per se. He still has the spots. Uh-huh. It's just he probably, I would say, more melatonin. Melatonin than normal. Melatonin. No melatonin. 
I think. No. Yeah, Google okay. Melaton. Okay. <laughs> so this kid was in the park. An amateur photographer was lucky enough to capture... Melaton. Melaton, yeah. Melatonin is, is used for sleeping. Mel- <laughs> Melatonin <laughs> is what my mom sometimes gives their Yorkie. I'm just saying... <laughs> And sometimes she eats it with the dog. An amateur photographer was lucky enough to capture on camera one of Odisha's ultra-rare black tigers. Because like a black panther, even though he looks all black, Mm -hmm. he has the the markings of the other panthers. He just has a shitload of melatonin that that covers it up. It's covered up, but it's still there. Anyway, this kid went out. Uh Amateur photographer. And wait till you see these pictures. I didn't know they... It's a melon... No. Melanistic tiger. A rare gene pool on which the black stripes are far more prominent on the Royal Bengals tigers only found in Odisha. I think Cincinnati should go with this now for the Bengals. That would be cool. Right? Be the black tigers. Oh, my God. Because they're uniforms. I'm rooting for them. But the helmet's got to change. Isn't that stupid? I don't like it. No. They look better in their black uniforms. Their numbers are sliding fast. There's only a handful of them that remain today. Wow. Well, because you have to look at how many tigers do we have, True. and then how many are we going to have that are born with too much melanin? I mean, right. they're not they're rare, so we need either more tigers or we gotta. I don't know how that works. If these guys mate, do they have? <laughs> do they have ones like themselves? So this is why I, I flunked <laughs> science. I just want to. <laughs> I'm so good this would be science class where somebody would put this up and go, "Now let's understand how this tiger became that way." And I'd be like, "Nope, just show more pictures of it." Uh-uh. That's fantastic. <laughs> While I was watching various birds and monkeys in the trees, I suddenly saw something which looked like a tiger, but not like the usual tiger. Mister So and So tells So and So TV. Back then, I didn't have any idea about these kind of tigers. It suddenly appeared from the woods, stayed for a few seconds. The 27 year old whipped out his digital camera and managed to snap a few pictures. It's unbelievable. I've seen many tigers before, and both wild and captivity. This was completely different. Photos of the black tigers are currently going viral on social media after surfacing on Instagram. We don't need to read the rest of this. It's very scientific. And you know what that is? Hard. Hard. That's hard. If you want to know more, you can find out on your own. This is where the resourceful termites can do it on their own. I trust that you can. This is... um. (laughs) This, this is so stupid. Well, I have two super stupid that made. I don't know why it made, made me laugh, except my mom's still all in on this. Okay. After more than seventy years, the FDA is dropping its regulation for French dressing. What? <laughs> what? Oh my god! Yeah, wishbone. That's my mom's favorite. I think they're the only ones that make it. Correct. Yeah. After I don't. After seven, more than 70 years, the federal government has decided that French dressing no longer needs to be regulated. Well, thank Jesus! When the standard of identity was established in 1950, French dressing was one of the three types of dressing we identified, the Food and Drug Administration said in the final rule posted on the Federal Register wow. on Thursday. The other two were mayonnaise and just salad dressing. Those three were regulated. French dressing is the only portable dress r- dressing required to adhere, to adhere to standards that require it to contain oil, mm-hmm. acidifying ingredients, and seasoning. Other foods include bread, <coughs> jams, and juices have their own standards of identity. When it comes to French dressing, many consumers expect red or red-orange color or tomato or tomato-derived elements, none of which re- are required under the standards. Yeah, I mean, if you said French dressing to me, it's always orange, and I hate it. Yeah, My mom loves it. She's kind of moved on, but she'd still, <laughs> but she'd still order it if they had it. She just knows they don't really can. When it comes, um, the Association for Dressing and Sauces, an industry group founded in 1926, petitioned for the standards to be revoked in 1998, citing the explosion of varieties in salad dressings. Right among them, ranch, cheese, peppercorn, love it, and Italian. French dressing is no longer a baseline for other dressings and has become marginalized. Exactly. I Maybe this will bring it back for my mom. <laughs> then she can order French, and he can order Roquefort. And then we can watch the 21-year-old server go, do what? 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 And then my dad will go, and I'd like some Waverly Wafers crackers. And then the kid goes, what? And a highball tall. 
what? And that's when the kid just falls over. And I'm like, what he meant was blue cheese and whiskey and water in a tall glass with ice. Thank right. you. December 2020, the FDA proposed revoking the standard for French dressing in the name of flexibility and innovation. French dressing standards of identity, identity was not honest or fair either, according to the FDA's final rule. There are a wide variety of French-style dressings on the market, and these will continue to be available based on, customer, on consumer demand. Wow. <laughs> People think it's not out there. That's why I should tell my mom. Go buy it and bring your own. She's not afraid to bring her own shit to a restaurant, ever. Russian, why don't you show up with French? Russian dressing. Nobody has that Russian was always... It's Thousand Island. Or Catalina. Catalina. Yeah. Green Goddess. I, I loved Green Goddess. It, it should. Texas, how you doing? <laughs> yep. Tell me what's going on down there. I'll tell you what's going on in Walmart. One of your Walmarts. One of your Walmarts. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about this lady, I'm looking at a photograph of her. Very normal looking. Okay. Woman charged with trying to buy another woman's baby. In the Walmart self-checkout line. What? Well, first of all, I'd say, does your baby have a barcode? Because we're in the <laughs> self-checkout line. I'm going to have to go deep, bleep. <laughs> Rebecca Lynette Taylor wow. is accused of offering another Walmart shopper up to half a million dollars to purchase her baby. What? Is somebody really rolling around Walmart with a half million cash? Well, I Maybe. Know. Yeah. A case. Texas woman to tell. She was arrested on January 18th and charged with the offense or of the sale or purchase of a child in connection with an incident that allegedly occurred five days prior, according to the Crockett Police Department. Crockett. Crockett Police Department? Yeah. Google, where's Crockett, Texas? <laughs> Google it, paddles. Where's Crockett? Crockett. How do I not know that? <laughs> on January 13th, the mother... City of Crockett. What's it near? Houston County. Houston County, as in Houston. The city, or is there a county called Sam, you? Sam Houston's name got lot used a lot in Texas. There's a Whataburger. Well, if there's a Whataburger, I see no reason to leave. <laughs> uh, on January 13th, the mother of the child in question called the police, advising a white woman with blonde hair approached her in the Crockett Walmart, wanting to purchase her son. The mother claimed that Taylor allegedly approached her while she was waiting to scan items in the self-checkout line. She claimed that Taylor began commenting on her son's blue hair and, and blue eyes before asking how much she could purchase him for. When the mother laughed over that question, assuming it was a joke, Taylor allegedly told her that she had $250,000 in the car. A quarter of a million in the car. It's 90 minutes from, Texas, from Houston. 90 minutes from Houston. And it is located in the David Crockett Forest. It's in the David Crockett Forest. Yep. Oh. She told her she had two hundred fifty grand in the car. And she'd pay that much for him. The mother also claims that both Taylor and a female companion became calling, began calling her son by his name without having been told it. Oh, oh fuck. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, I'm not sure I would. The mother claims Taylor followed her out to the parking lot where she proceeded to offer more money. She's doubling down in the parking lot because she got nowhere in the checkout line. Once in the parking lot, Taylor began screaming, saying she wouldn't take $250,000 for him. Then she would give her a half a million because she wanted him, and she was going to take him. Surveillance wow. video from Walmart seemingly confirmed the incident. Taylor said that he was the per Taylor said that he with the baby was a perfect fit, and she'd been wanting why baby for a long time now. Buy a baby. Wow. <laughs> Her bond was set at fifty thousand dollars. She bonded bonded out of the Houston County Jail on January twentieth. She's not yet been indicted, and it's unclear if she has an attorney. Why don't even care if you walk up to somebody and offer them money for their baby, but I don't like that you know its name. She might have heard her say it in Walmart, but to me it implies you've got your eye on that one. A little stalky stalky there. Yeah. A little stalky stalky. This makes me laugh. There's, a, there's one lady, and shockingly it's not my mom, trying to save the soda tab. I I never got it. I hated it. My dad drank Coke. My mom drank Tab. And then we had to drink, like, Bob's Cola or some right. bullshit. Shasta. Yeah. We didn't even have, have a name you'd ever heard of. It was <laughs> just it just said Cola on it. It was, yeah, yeah, it was good enough. But my mom loved Tab. She loved Tab. 
that's going to be my, that'll always be the eternal picture of my mom laying in a lawn chair, putting um, baby oil with iodine in it all over her body with a, a Reynolds wrapped piece of cardboard to reflect the sun to get more of a tan while smoking a cool and drinking tab. How many bad things can you put in your body in one chair? She don't care. She don't care. No. Vicky don't care. Don't Vicky's care. got a card in the cool. She's ready to go. <laughs> totally. Um, this lady, wow. <laughs> Trish is her name. Trish. I lived in fear for it, for it being continued for years. She's really afraid of it because Coke said they're doing away with it. Really? They're getting rid of tap, yeah. They did say it. We on this podcast we talked about yeah. it. But the time, the to- the clock is ticking. They weren't oh, kidding. They, they the gave the addicts a lead up. Okay. She said when the new notification came out, the Coca Cola was going to stop making it. I had I had people I hadn't spoken to in ten years call me to give me their condolences. <laughs> okay. She drinks about three cans a day for as long as she can remember. It's a central part of my life. She said, and she's known for it. I've had colleagues decorate my office for a milestone birthday with tab themed decorations like I drink tab, water, and wine. <laughs> oh my God. She started stockpiling cases of tab in 2020 when she realized a drink would soon be gone. I mean, I can understand this. There's things I feel that way about. Orange yeah. soda. Okay. Yeah. If if they started to say, but I like like Fanta. I like a f- couple of them, so I really wouldn't care as long as there was one left. No, I'm saying as long as there's one kind of diet orange soda, a sun kissed Fanta, I don't care what it is, as long as there's one left. But right. um, she started stockpiling cases. She has 23 12 packs left and she's rationing, rationing her supply. <laughs> She'll hang on to the final case for prosperity. Oh, wow. She's not giving up with a, out of fight. She has, oh my Lord. <laughs> mm hmm. The product was cut as a part of the sweeping reduction of Coca-Cola's beverage portfolio announced in 2020. Right, we were doing this then. The reasoning was clear. The 200 brands on the chopping block, half of Coke's portfolio, together made up just 2% 2 of Coke's total revenue. It was a hard decision to discontinue Tab. In order to continue and innovate and give the customers choices we want, we have to make tough choices about our portfolio. Coke is too confusing anyway. Like I'll say to my sister, you have a Diet Coke. And Coke Zero. I don't even know what the difference is, but I like Diet Coke better. Yeah, but I don't know. There's too yeah. many names, too many. It's just too many. Too <laughs> many choices. Um, tab fans think they made the wrong call. But how are you going to get the attention of a giant thing? Well, she's getting a petition going. She's got a petition. She's gathered 1,100 signatures. Wow. Trish, you're a lot short. Yeah. 1,100 people. I'd sign it on behalf of my mom. They're raising um, money for billboards in Coke's home city, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Wow. I met the man that owns Coca-Cola once. He came to one of Ron's meet and greets. He's a Ron White fan. Yeah. Very, very nice. Really? Yeah. Cool. Very, a bit eclectic. But w- wouldn't one be <laughs> when <laughs> one... <laughs> when you have the money of the world. <laughs> he was very friendly. And he knew all about the Lake of the Ozarks, which made me very proud because he likes to do powerboat things. Yeah, he's a big Ron White fan. Um, they were gonna. He's got. She's got eleven heart signatures. The efforts have been fruitless. Coke is not responding. <laughs> of course they're not. Oh my God! Yeah. See, Coke introduced Surge to the market in nineteen ninety seven as a comp- comp- competitor to Mountain Dew. I've never even heard of it. It was gross. Was it gross? And they pulled it six years later. But Surge fans wanted it back. And in two thousand eleven, a suit group of social media enthusiasts decided to help. So they brought Surge back. Yeah, I feel bad for Trish. I know what it's like <laughs> to just be down to your last whatever. Wow. It's so sad. So sad. Can we talk about CVS's receipts? CVS's receipts are fucking ridiculous. Yeah. They're like Santa Claus lists. And I don't, I know there's the environmental argument. I'm never that lady that thinks of that first. I just think about what the fuck are you doing? Like all I'll buy is a ma- one mascara thing. Eight dollars. Do hold for your receipt. And most, my biggest complaint about it is most of them, I have to use them like right at that moment. Or it expires. Or it expires days. by the time I get to the car. Yeah, it's no, it's all within a week or something. And then you're going, and they claim that they are um, specific to each buyer. So, like, if we went and bought the same item, the giant thing of receipts that come out. Um, the, ours won't be the same. Really? 
Nope. This is all part of their let's get to know your customer. <laughs> My dad always said, don't ever sign up for any of this shit because if there's ever a workman's comp case, they'll go back and look at everything you've done and then they judge all that and they, they can. And they're yeah. sneaky like that. So let's say I claim that I was You're disabled covered. from work and got hurt and then they found out that I was at um, Kroger or a grocery store or yeah. Schnucks buying shitloads of beer and stuff. They, yeah. I don't know. My dad's probably right, but I sign up just because it's easier. Yeah, but if I'm saying, like, I have a disability of a brain injury or, you know, I my arms don't work, but yet I'm throwing back 12 packs, I'm just saying they can use it against you, according to Jack Madigan. Now, that doesn't mean that I took his advice. No. I signed right up. Of course you did. I don't in the grocery stores. You like the savings. I do like the savings. I don't want the receipts. Um, but this is why they do it. This is, why are they so long? Because Walgreens, problem is, all my shit's already at CVS. Otherwise, Walgreens just says, hey, you have 50 bucks, you want to use it? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it's not the... Right. And then I have to reread them, and I'm like, the receipts from CVS where it's like some mascara, but not the other, or this kind, it's just ridiculous. And then what's even more psycho is I look at it and I go, well, I might use that. Never in my life. No. Nope. <laughs> and they're even helpful because sometimes the lady will go, you can use that $5 right now. Uh -huh. I'm like, I didn't even see that. And she'll rip it apart. Yeah. They know more about it, the people working there, and they're nice about it, but I don't. Why are they so long? Blame CVS's Extra Care Loyalty Program. When an Extra Care card member checks out in a store, personal rewards, coupons, and new product suggestions and other benefits show up at the bottom of the receipt. No two customers get exactly the same savings and offers, as they are tailored based on the uh, customer's past purchases or other inputs. For example, we understand what that means. Right. Um, I, we don't need an example. The receipt strategy is a way to communicate the value of being an extra care member to customers, said Deidre Popovich, an assistant professor of marketing at Texas Tech University who studies consumer psychology. Well, nobody's thinking that. No. Deirdre? Nope. We're all just thinking this is goddamn ridiculous. Exactly. Oh, maybe. They even give a look when they give it to you. They're trying to remember them to take advantage of their loyalty program perks and prompt them to make, make return purchases in the future. 25 years ago, this was established. That's all it's about. Now, see, I would switch, except their pharmacy is really good. And if you have a prescription, they always just go, it's ready. Do you want to come get it? It is threatening, though. Like, sometimes I'm on the road, and they'll st if I don't answer them, they'll start texting. Kathleen, we're going to throw your shit out in two days. Are you coming or not? I'm like, God damn it. I'm in Turlock, California. I love that I you're arguing about the paper receipts. Yeah, I'm clearly not thinking about paper. I'm with Walgreens. Well, then they say, do you want them digitally? That's an option now at CVS. Do you want your receipts digitally? I don't want all this shit in my phone. No. I don't want it in my hands. I don't want it in my phone. Nat, yet. If there's a one that says you get $10 off for anything, then just do that. Right. I don't. Walgreens is better, but I don't know about their pharmacy, and then I got to switch. Last, well, it's not the last thing. We're going to finish with a quote. But this is crazy looking. Wait till you guys see this picture if you haven't. Mysterious ice formation showed up in Chicago this week. It was actually last week, but I didn't have time to get to it. You've heard of blizzards and maybe even the polar vortex, but have you heard of ice pancakes? No. 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 What about ice bites or ice jams? Ice jams, ice yeah. jams yeah. yeah. These unique names sound fascinating, but require specific weather conditions. So there's a picture of downtown Chicago and then Lake Michigan. And it looks like a million ice pancakes. They're perfect circles. Really? Yeah, like if I walked down there and saw that, because I have the scientific mind of basically an Indian in 1401, I'd be like, oh, the pancake gods are mad. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I love a pancake god. God of pancakes. This week, ice pancakes were found along Chicago's lake shore of Lake uh, shoreline of Lake Michigan. The photographs were taken. Ba ba ba. Wow. I'm going to tell you. Okay. Ice pancakes look exactly like you think they would. Round, flat disc made of ice. They are common in, in the Arctic, but 
typically only starting to make an appearance in the low to 48 since the temperatures got well before below freezing for several days. The phenomenon is limited strictly to bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, or oceans. Well, Ponds. what else is there? Ponds. Ponds. Mm -hmm. Creeks. Puddles. Puddles. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, wells. 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 Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coves. <laughs> coves. Coves. Coves in a lake. Yeah. Once those bodies of cold water bodies of water are cold enough, the chunks of ice that have started to form will knock against each other, forming elliptical shaped discs with rounded edges. Wow. A signature feature of pancake ice is rage, raised edges or ice ridges on the perimeter caused by the pancakes bumping into each other from the ocean waves. Uh, uh, uh. Um, okay. Other phenomena such as ice balls, ice jams, and even ice bites can be seen in in and along the Great Lakes during winter months. So. Go check that out if you've never seen a picture of an ice pancake. I hadn't. I've never heard of it. We're going to finish this out, termites, with a quote. Okay. I like this one. Okay. From your hard magazine? It's not a hard magazine, Paddles. <laughs> it's called The Week. And Lewis loves it. And I, some of it's hard, yes. but you just skip that. It's like college. I just will only look at the shit I like. <laughs> okay. So Some of it's already too late. Yeah. A lot of these people don't realize it with social media. I've already seen this shit by the time. It's like CNN today was like, there's some interesting news on Joe Rogan and Spotify. <laughs> Four days ago, guys. Right. Four days ago. Whatever it was, three days ago. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. That CNN guy's gone. Zuckerberg. Zucker. No. Nope. Jeff Zuckerberg. Yeah. He destroyed late night TV. I have no no empathy for the man. He was really good at morning TV. Remember all the late night wars? He completely fucked up late night TV. And I was I got penalized for a lot of that. So it's personal. I never could cheer the man on. Apparently he was very nice to all of his employees. That's a good thing. But he didn't belong in late night TV. It was a it, it, chaos. Okay. And then we all got subjugated to his bullshit. Like, well, if you do Letterman, you can't do this show. And if you do that show, you can't do this show. So it says, who cares? It's five minutes of jokes. Nobody, nobody's going to go, well, if Kathleen's on David Letterman, I'm never watching, or I'll always watch. Or we, we affect nothing. Okay, bring it down. <laughs> I'm glad he's out. And I hope CNN goes back to just being information like they used to be. We don't need opinion news on the left or the right. Let Fox do it if they want. There's never been... just. I just want headlines, okay. facts. No I don't need anybody. I don't need a panel of people mm -hmm. that I don't even know who these people are. Why are you talking to me? Right. I used to understand why they'd have, they'd have like an old person like Pat Buchanan. Now, I don't agree with Pat Buchanan on probably 80% of what he says, but the paddle is falling asleep. <laughs> All right, we're going to finish this up. But Pat well, Buchanan was smart, and Pat Buchanan out. had a resume, and Pat Buchanan had a reason to be speaking on those topics. You have an inspirational quote. I have two. Well, great. This is a good one. Okay. August Roden quoted in the Austin Chronicle, patience is also a form of action. Oh, I like that. It's a good one. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm not good with patience because I always think I should do something. But that's from being in a household of nine people. If you don't act, the moment will pass. You'll be stopped. You'll be trampled. You won't get to the bathroom. You'll never get a blow dryer. Nope. You won't get breakfast. Hot water. Action. Yeah. <laughs> but. Use your elbows. <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody said you couldn't push people on the steps. Uh-uh. Uh, this is a good one. Writer Julie Burchill quoted in Psychology Today. It has been said that a pretty face is a passport, but it's not. It's a visa, and it runs out fast. Oh, dark. I like oh, it. Oh, dark. Oh, do all the pretty termites feel sad? No. Oh, of course yeah, not. No, because you know what? Pretty is as pretty does, as my dad would say. Pretty is as pretty does. Oh. And you know what? You can be pretty forever. Christy Brinkley still looks wonderful. That's why, like, sometimes when I would take a picture of a haircut in, to the, the hair lady. I'm like, I'd rethink it and go, yeah, well, that haircut looks good on Cher because she's Cher. Kathleen, right. you're not getting that haircut. It's, you know, or when people go, well, so-and-so had good plastic surgery. Well, so-and-so was pretty to start with. Right. 
Right. We can't. Yeah. So there's your two quotes, termites. Oh, and by the way, the T-shirts, the new, uh, the new, but they're the other one, the black ones with the pink on the back. Those, the second, third shipment or whatever is available now. And it's the last one. And it's the last one of that shirt. Yeah. For sure. For sure. We can't do any more of those. We're going to go to short sleeve for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, I'm going to try really hard to make that happen. And, um, mm. Do you guys want a St. Patrick's Day shirt? Why not? Yeah. I always look for the ones I have in my drawer for St. Patrick's Day. Right. Yeah. Even for that week. Maybe even the whole month. It won't be green. No, it's going to be white with green and things. Nice. But, yeah, green doesn't match anything. Nah. No. But it's going to have a bunch of uh, an, uh, an Irish stuff on it that you can wear on a St. Patrick's Day. Um, but then white you can wear all year long. Um, I'm off on the road. To many, many places. Durham and Charlotte. Durham and Charlotte. With who? My friend Kelly McFarlane. She will be with me on those shows. Very funny. And I'm going for some Carolina barbecue. Um, which is my favorite barbecue. And it's a St. Louis. And I should not be talking like that. I should say Kansas City, St. Louis, or Memphis. But hey, sorry. Hey. I like the vinegar base the best. Yeah. Then second place, I will go for St. Louis. Right. And Kansas City, almost a tie. I am in St. Louis on March 5th, and um, yeah, that's going to be a big a big shindig. Charlottesville. Charlottesville. Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach Augusta. Augusta, Georgia. And Charleston. Where? Charleston. Oh, Charleston. Right, right. That's a great gig, too. But that's one of my favorite cities. New Orleans, Charleston, Savannah. I must have lived in one of those in my past lives because I get most excited about those. Atlanta, Portland, Seattle. Atlanta, Portland, Seattle. Portland. I will see my cousin Tom. He's hilarious, uh -huh. uh, and his friends. Seattle, if I am able to leave the pub in the alley, I will be attending my own show and performing <laughs> at the Moore Theater, which also has a super cool bar in it. Yeah, that place great. is awesome. And the, <laughs> the place in Portland is called the Arlene Schnitzer Sim something Symphony Hall something, and <laughs> Lewis just kept call calling it. The schnitz. I said, Lou, I don't think Arlene was that cool <laughs> no. to shorten it. Arlene sounded like a serious person who yeah. was a nice person and donated an ass load of money mm -hmm. to have her name put on there. And Arlene's kind of an old school name. I'm yeah. guessing Arlene. Not a drinker fun person. Probably more of a symphony person. Right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I can't see her at the pub with me in Portland either, which has a lot of fun pubs. The show will be fun. The show will be super fun. Mm -hmm. Um... And that's it, termites. Okay. Be good termites. Be Valentine's termites. Don't forget your, don't forget. You got to be a Valentine's termite if. This is where Lou goes, that's all made up. I don't know who participates in this shit. But I'm like, Lou, do what you care. Just Which is why he's single. All right, exactly. Right. Um, Be a Valentine's termite. Be a Super Bowl termite. I hope you win your squares if you, if you, I've bought two. On a thing, I can't say who's in charge of that because his job would interfere with that. Um, but I have bought two squares. I've never won one in my life. Just want to make sure that wasn't my dad calling. Um, maybe I'll win a square for the first time ever. Maybe. Yeah. Never I've won neighboring squares. You can do that. Oh. If your neighbor wins, they have a neighbor deal. Where oh. So if this square wins, these four neighbors, you get like 25 bucks. But, you know, 50, the only square only costs 50, so... I've never won the big one, though. All right, termites, that's it. Have fun in the Super Bowl. Uh, be social, termites. Get out of the house. It's cold everywhere and shitty. Get out of the house. That's my advice. Even if you just go up to Lowe's and buy a... Have you checked your filters lately? Oh, my God. I love to buy a filter. I love to change a filter. Good reason to go. All right, that's it. Night-night, termites.